Hey guys, this is Chris from MixdownOnline.com. I just want to share with you a few Cubase tips just to improve your workflow. Uh, these tips are very useful and I use them a lot. Um, first of all, uh, let's look at that small option right here, which is called the divide track list option. Uh, basically, if you activate that, just go on the top right and you click on that option. And now uh, right on top of your project window, uh, there's an extra space uh, that will uh, be created. So uh, let me show you uh, what is the advantage of using that kind of feature uh, in Cubase. Um, so for example, what I have here with my marker track, which is originally on top, if I deactivate that, it's on top. But the problem is if I go down and edit some, some MIDI tracks or work on some other tracks uh, or just record, I don't have access to that marker track, which um, helps me to have a visual of the uh, song structure. So you click on that option and right on top, you can drag all tracks that you want. So in my case, I drag my marker track so it stays on top and it's always uh, visually available to me, uh, whatever I'm doing on my project window. So it keeps that track static on top. Um, I like that and saves me a lot of time. Um, so there you go. So that's my first tip. All right, my second tip. Uh, it's a very nice one. This one as well saves me a lot of time. So let's say I want to just add a, an insert plugin. Uh, for example, just a quick EQ. I'm just going to go and check all the EQs I have. It's, it could be confusing when you have a lot of plugins installed. So now, what is good about this option is you can create um, custom folders with uh, just if you want to use or if you want to make available all the plugins you usually use because you know uh, between you and me you're never going to use all the plugins that are installed on your computer you know so like me you probably have like favorites plugins or go-to plugins that you always use so what i do is i just create a folder and i uh, just drag these plugins into that folder so they're easy to reach so to do so i'm just going to go into devices and plugin manager and I have my window uh, with all the plugins installed. And um, let's say, for example, on the right side, I have all the default folder. Um, if I want to add a folder, if I want to add a collection, they call it collection. So I can click on new collection, which is going to just uh, create a new empty kind of an empty folder. Um, just call it test, test one. There you go. So in my test one uh, folder or collection, um, I can actually just drag and drop all the plugins that I want to make available in this folder. Very simple. So I already have a Chris folder that has all the plugins I usually work with. Uh, if I want to edit the, the list, I can actually just, you know, delete or add whatever I want from the right side to the left very simple so i'm just going to get out of that window and now in my insert now i'm into my uh chris collection which is all the plugins i usually use so if i want to change collection just click on the arrow on the top right and i have another collection with all my uad plugins that i bought and i have another collection with my slate plugins for example okay uh, so that gives me uh, a faster access to the plugins I uh, usually use or I use a lot. And these are available on the mixer as well. Same thing here, you know, just click on there, you select your collection. And uh, so by default, I just leave it at the Chris collection. So that's my main, um, my, my main collection. And in this collection, you can actually, uh, in every collection anyways, you can actually just create folders. So as you can see, I have a folder for my reverbs, uh, another one uh, for my uh, delays. I created one for my EQs and same for the compressors. So you can create whatever folder you want. So again, go into devices, pl plugin manager, and there you go. So you have your folders right here. You can just click on new collection or just add a new folder right here. Um, and you know, just gonna another test for just to add a folder, and I have you know I can just drag and drop uh, the plugin on uh, directly on the folder, and it's gonna be it's gonna appear right below. And there you go, guys. So that's my second tip. All right, guys. Now for tip number three. 
So this feature was first introduced in Cubase 8. Uh, so it's the render in place feature. So let's uh, listen to a MIDI piano. So very simple. So let's say I just want to take that section right here and just bounce that in audio. Uh, so, you know, I don't need to solo the track. I don't need to just, um, you know, do the regular thing we do when we export a track. So, you know, there's a faster way we can do it now. It's by clicking on edit and render in place and click on render settings. So these are the set settings that I have access to to do the rendering. So if I click on dry, uh, very simple, it's going to render the file. And there you go, I have a new audio file right below the MIDI one. So the, that section that was uh, exported is muted. And you have the piano in audio. Cool. So now you, you notice that we can still hear that reverb and delay effect that I inserted into the uh, instrument track. Um, so what, what it did on top of just bouncing the track, it actually uh, um, inserted the same effects uh, on the uh, the new track that was uh, created. Okay, so this is very, very cool. Uh, that I like a lot. So you don't need to commit right away. If you want to just keep, uh, you're not sure of your setting, you just want to keep editing the settings of out of these uh, inserts, uh, insert plugins, you can do so. Just bounce uh out of the dry option and you're good to go now if you want to bounce that let's bounce the next section and uh i just want to commit and just bounce that section with all the effects inserted into that instrument track i'm just going to go into edit render in place and render settings again and now i'm just going to click on uh, channel settings All right, so now let's have a listen. And so now the effects, the reverb and everything that was inserted uh, onto the track is now bounced um, on a new, uh, with the piano, you know, on a new track. So there you go, guys. So this is a very useful tip. And by the way, you can actually apply the same thing on a regular audio track. Uh, so if you want to render just a small part of a, of, a, uh, of a track, you can do the same with audio as we did with MIDI. So now next tip, uh, the visibility and zones. Okay, so now on my project window, um, let's go right up here. I have like, a, okay, right here, I have like acoustic guitars that I'm not using right now. So on the visibility tab, right on the top left, if you don't see that window, very simple. Uh, just go right here on the setup window layout tab, uh, and then you'll be able to select the inspector. So now in uh, that inspector window, you'll see the visibility tab. Uh, basically, this is made just to bring your tracks visible or invisible. So it does not delete the track, but it makes the track visible or invisible. So I don't use that feature a lot, but I do use uh, a similar feature on the mix console. So we still have that visibility feature uh, where we can uh, make a track visible or invisible. Uh, but the zones uh, tab right here, this is where, this is the section I like the most. So on my mixer, I always wanna have my uh, master fader and my uh, stereo output uh, always available on my mixer. So I want these channels to be static. So now you can, you can actually uh, make these, any, any channels, if you want to bring them static to the right side of the mixer or the left side of the mixer, you can do so. So I just selected my master fader right here and I just click on the right uh, dot here and you see it's static so I can move all my, uh, my faders from right to left and that master fader is not moving. Um, so you can actually put it on the left if you prefer. And there you go, it's, it does the same thing. Okay, uh, so what I usually do is I, uh, my master out, my stereo and all my, my, uh, my stems uh, channels are uh, static and the rest is not, you know, even my reference track can be static if I want. Uh, so there you go. So very simple again, uh, speeds up the workflow, uh, very useful. I love that feature.
So there you go, guys. That's it for this week. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to share. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them below. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, see you.